Uh, thank you very much. Uh, obviously, we are at the tech conference and uh, there has to be some technical problems at the beginning. Um, so if you are Shiny or are a developer and you're reading the title of this presentation, you're probably thinking, uh, wow, that's uh, 700, uh, 700 users. Uh, that's huge for a Shiny app. And this is true. But what if you are not so uh, psyched about R? Why I think uh, the story is interesting is uh, how uh, we as a data science team build this up uh, pretty fast and effective. And it's actually uh, used on daily basis by, la by a sa sales team. And I will talk about it uh, more while discussing uh, UI and the UX. Uh, the story is also unique uh, because scaling R-based uh, application is challenging due to how R and Shiny were designed. And this I will uh, discuss in more details uh, when talking about scale. The few things that uh, I'm particularly uh, proud when thinking about this project is this, uh, this was a, a great uh, success for the client. Uh, this app is internally uh, called a profit maker. It has been rolled out in two major European countries and is scheduled for a few more. Mm, it was, at least to my knowledge, one of the largest production deployment of uh, a Shiny application. And we made a significant open source contribution, contributions while uh, working on that project. And uh, I'm talking about this today because I was on the development team of this app uh, and I know it pretty well. But uh, before I moved on, uh, I would like to know something more about uh, you, uh, which I hoped will help me uh, with my presentation. So how many of you over here would identify yourself as a data scientist? Okay, and uh, software engineer? Okay, even more. Great. And uh, who knows uh, uh, and uh, use R? Okay, I'm uh, happy to see this. And uh, who knows Shiny? Okay, uh, great. Uh, so, uh, when we uh, think about the stack, uh, we work at Epsilon. We work for uh, various industries, uh, but this app was uh, delivered for a retail company where end users were, were the sales representatives. So at this point, you might think, uh, why did we choose R and Shiny uh, to deliver this project? Uh, first of all, we had a very uh, tight timeline um, for this project, and we had to start the tests with the end users uh, in less than two months. And Shiny is great for prototyping. We had parts of the business logic already written in R and had a previous positive experience uh, with working with it. And um, but I find it uh, pretty important, and usually this is overlooked by the companies. While we were um, aware of the challenges that uh, we will be facing when working with R and Shiny, we thought that this is actually a great op opportunity to contribute to R and Shiny ecosystem, and in that sense, uh, give back to the community. So taking that into account, uh, we decided to continue the project uh, with R and Shiny. And we started with a few PowerPoint slides uh, as a mockups, and we had a working prototype in Shiny in one month. And this was super intensive uh, one month, but was great in the sense that it allowed us to build the confidence uh, with our client. So uh, they uh, feel that uh, they, they uh, have the application that will uh, work and look good. Uh, that the timeline was doable and that we will be able to start the user tests on time and get the valuable feedback uh, from the users. But obviously, we had plenty of challenge on the way and uh, I will talk about UI, UX, UX and scale. So um, probably all of us over here uh, have quite high expectations from the uh, web and mobile application of applications. They have to look good and they need to be interactive. And the days when a company can deliver a user interface for the model in a form of Excel spreadsheet with some VBA code in the back are way over. 
On the other hand, uh, with the default uh, skin in Shiny, uh, we get nothing for free and it's totally uh, not impressive. So we decided to use uh, Shiny Semantic, which is an R package uh, that downloads and imports uh, uh, Semantic UI CSS classes. And it allows you to use Semantic UI components within Shiny. Uh, this package uh, is developed by us at Epsilon and has been uh, fully open sourced. So uh, this is the example of app. Um, developed in Shiny Semantic. The view has been uh, modularized. Uh, we have the user can navigate over the page using the uh, top menu. Uh, the content is put in the race containers uh, with color uh, coded labels. And we have some extra elements like rating uh, on the left and in the middle cards. And obviously uh, you could still use uh, standard, standard Shiny widgets like uh, DT. So with Shiny Semantic, uh, there was no overhead and we could uh, deliver the results on the same pace or even faster uh, as with using standard, standard Shiny components, uh, which was great. We were able to skip the graphic designer uh, along the way, uh, which obviously resu resulted in some um, uh, cost savings. And which was, which was great uh, for us as a development team. We were able to uh, customize uh, the, UI, the UI elements. And all of that uh, allowed us to deliver up with a great look pretty fast. However, uh, we still had some performance issues uh, that I will discuss right now. And I already mentioned that uh, we were developing our own uh, custom components and we did it uh, not only uh, for the app to look good, but to speed it up. Uh, so for example, uh, we've built our own uh, search component with a server side uh, API and uh, own uh, search alg algorithm uh, to allow for further optimization. It also had its own uh, flexible search functionality to further enhance the user experience. We found out that uh, using indexed uh, tables uh, from the DT package provides a huge speed up uh, versus the standard uh, deployer filters. And um, while the reactivity in R is great, uh, obviously um, it's slowing down the application. So we used uh, La lazy rendering uh, for charts uh, by placing them in the mod mo models and only rendering them when it was explicitly requested by the user. And last but not least, we controlled some of the reactivity uh, programmatically to, uh, to trigger it and avoid unnecessary renders. And last challenge that uh, we had to face was scaling up. R is a single thread, uh, threaded application, which means that a uh, Shiny application can serve only one user at a time. And if your user base is really small, uh, this is not really a problem. But when it's growing, obviously the requests are queuing and uh, uh, the user experience is very unpleasant uh, because the app is lagging. On the other hand, the Shiny server um, in an open source version doesn't have the authentication feature and the pro version, it's, uh, it gets uh, pretty costly uh, when the user base is growing. So we've implemented our own solution using the load balancer, which is distributing uh, the workload uh, across multiple uh, Shiny servers. Uh, we have each Shiny server running the same application uh, in the Docker container, and the authentication was taken to the separate level of our stack. And uh, this is the architecture uh, of our application, and it works uh, as follows. Uh, users um, enters the application, is redirected by the proxy uh, to the container with the minimal load. Uh, it's being authenticated, and then uh, the Shiny application is served uh, inside the Docker container. And the solution 
is uh, compatible with EC2, Azure, or uh, on-premises server. So, uh, summing up, um, I hoped uh, that I showed you that uh, a data science team uh, can efficiently scale a uh, production-ready uh, Shiny application with uh, UI and UX focus uh, quickly and aesthetically. Uh, thank you very much, but I know that I have uh, still a few minutes of, uh, uh, of the time, so I want to do a small uh, detour from the uh, main topic and uh, introduce you to the idea of uh, Our Ladies, uh, which uh, is a global organization that, uh, that aims to increase the diversity uh, within our uh, community. And it doesn't matter uh, whether you are at the beginning uh, of your career or you already have a leadership role, you come from teaching or business, and uh, there is a place for you in the community. We organize uh, meetups or we do the online uh, mentorship in a friendly and um, safe environment. And I find it important to uh, talk about uh, such initiative at the male-dominated event like this, uh, because I also found about this uh, from my male colleague who attended a tech uh, conference. Uh, so please uh, spread the word, and uh, I'm happy uh, to talk about it after my presentation and tell you how you can contribute uh, or help. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, uh, just uh, one note, uh, the GitHub link uh, is a link to our open source repository. Uh, with, uh, we open source uh, a few of our packages. Uh, I'm uh, happy to take a few questions right now. Thank you. So, thank you, Olga. Um, any questions from the room? Uh, okay, probably I uh, have a couple. Uh, one would be, um, so we know the architecture and what we try to achieve, but uh, it's always good to know also about some specific use case uh, that it was. I'm not sure whether you can talk about it or not, but it um, would be interesting, you know, what sort of business, what, you know, what advantage did they get through the app? Um, um, well, so um, basically, uh, this application uh, helped the salespeople uh, price the order, and uh, there is some decision support system written in R uh, that helps them uh, price the order uh, that the uh, client uh, wants to make. Uh, so using this tool, they they have the interface. It's uh, user friendly. Before they were using. Uh, uh, a solution from a, a very big uh, vendor. I'm not going to tell what they were using, but uh, it wasn't really uh, helpful for them. And uh, so instead, they uh, were introduced this tool. Unfortunately, I can't show it, but it's pretty simple. Just with a few clicks, um, they are advised what um, what should be the pricing, and they feel confident uh, about the price that they are giving. So it's uh, not too low and uh, high enough uh, to uh, make a good business case uh, for the client. Okay, and where does the nice UI come into place? Because I understand they, uh, you were showing some graphs, yeah. right? So uh, would they look some at some distribution of the price that they might quote, or? Well, uh, I can't talk about this, okay. unfortunately. <laughs> Uh, but there are some visualization involved, and they are in the uh, ggplot. Okay, cool. Um, any more in the meantime? Okay, so let's move to the second question I had. So, okay, 700 users now. Um, are you planning to scale it as well? I mean, is the architecture going to scale well to beyond the 700 users? Well, um, obviously, these are not all concurrent users, and... Uh, it uh, also, mm, so as I mentioned, the, the user base will grow uh, because the application will be rolled out in at least uh, three more uh, European countries. Uh, but it's actually, it's actually pretty easy to, to scale it because uh, you just add another machine and... Uh, and each request is completely separate request, right? It's not yeah. dependent. So, uh, 
and uh, obviously uh, there is some uh, promising development uh, within uh, Shiny, uh, so the, the promise package. So maybe uh, at some point uh, we will be able to paral 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 parallelize uh, our requests. Uh, and I think uh, the, the, the multi-thread our application is nothing that will come in the near future, uh, but there are some exciting development uh, coming up. Okay. Cool. Um, thank you very much. If there thank is you. no more questions, uh, then... I oh, yeah, there is a there question. Is yes, question. sorry, you were hidden away. Hello. Uh, I didn't use uh, Shiny, uh, but uh, as far uh, and as I understood, uh, the uh, problem with parallelization is partly because uh, the it's more more focused on prototyping. Yes, uh, and I'm uh, interested in uh, how. Uh, how constrained the uh, domain of this app is, uh, and is it really focused only on uh, machine learning stuff? Uh, and could you summarize like something uh, when you shouldn't really do app in Shiny or something like that? Well, I, I think the, the primary idea of Shiny was that, that this is a great tool for a uh, uh, data scientist to communicate uh, his or her results and that uh, Shiny, uh, at least when it was developed at the beginning, was never intended uh, to, to be a tool where you create uh, an application for a couple hundred of users. And the, the main limit uh, of Shiny uh, and also other um, other libraries that are made for data scientists, like uh, uh, recent uh, tool Dash. It's, uh, it has the same limitation. Uh, it cannot be parallelized, and uh, that's why it's not uh, scaling really, really well. So I think this is the, this is the main constraint. And also, uh, R is not a very efficient language, so uh, obviously, something written in uh, C or Go will be much faster uh, because the R is a tool for do statistical analysis uh, and uh, not writing high performance uh, applications. Cool. Okay. Um, anything else from anyone? Oh, yeah, there is a hand here. Maybe just, just one question about, uh, uh, so now you, which is great now is that data scientists can almost directly change uh, the visualization and what they can present to the users. But at the same time, it can be also maybe dangerous because if they can change uh, pretty often the, uh, the UI and so on. So do you have some kind of process to, as m now you have more like, you know, you are faster to deploy to kind of, uh, you know, maybe some new process to address that so that, you know, it's more coherent and so on? Um, well, so every change that is uh, made to the tool is uh, obviously uh, done in agreement with business. And uh, before uh, we change it, it's, it's not like it's a, a the change is exposed. The, the whole user base is exposed to the change, uh, so uh, it's usually the smaller group. We do the tests. We see how it goes, uh, and uh, mm, from the technical part, uh, we run the uh, UI. We have the automated UI tests uh, uh, for the application, so to make sure that uh, none of the change that we are introducing is uh, breaking something that was working uh, previously. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um.